two, three, four, five. Are we live? We are now live, folks. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Tonight, you're going to be uh, spending a lot of time in Revelations chapter 16. Revelations chapter 16. And we're going to go to some other places, of course. You know me, we just can't stay in one, one place, right? Uh, I, I had some of the handouts from last week, but I don't know where they went. Did you got them? Mama's got them. These people up front, did y'all get them already? My friends up front here need some, Ma. Uh, Cookie needs one. What you need in really is the uh, sequence of events chart. And for those people watching online, uh, I'll try to post them onto our website in the notes section. I'll try to do that between now and Tuesday. Don't hold me to it, but we'll try to do that between now and Tuesday. All right. And I'll uh, next Sunday night I'll have uh, the the scripture references for the order of resurrection that we talked about last week for you. Okay. I want you to have it. I want you to eat it. I want you to. I want you to know it better than you know your own name. You're going to need it. All right. Can we pray? I have a request for Brother Mike. Uh, I want you to continue to pray for Pastor Fred. There's about four more other requests on that front row as well that we want to we want to ask God to continue to minister to them too. If you have a request, just raise your hand where you are. Let's ask the Lord to bless. Can we do that? Father, we're grateful that we can be back together. We're grateful that we can open this book freely. We ask you right now that you just speak to us this evening. Prepare your church, your body, for that which lies ahead. Minister to these that were written on these prayer request cards. Your word has said for us to make our requests known, and many have done that, so now we leave them at your charge. We ask that you bless this evening, inspire us, instruct us, break us down, build us back, so that we can be conformed, not to the image of this world, not to the image of culture, but to the image of your dear Son. Let Jesus Christ be preeminent in every one of our lives. He is the root of David. He is the morning star. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. It will be him who soon sets upon the throne of David and takes his rightful authority and position. And we will get to watch it all unfold as a member of his bride. Continue to prepare us, continue to make us white in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' powerful name, amen, amen. Um, We're going to talk tonight, I'm going to go through with you the third sequence of event on your blue chart. We've talked about the seven-year tribulation, the seven seals, the seven trumpets. Last week we talked about the order of resurrection, the rapture of the saints. Tonight I want to go through all of the, the wrath, the seven vials of the wrath of God that is to be poured out. But if you'll give me your attention up here for just a moment. I have been bombarded this whole entire last few days over the election fiasco. Uh, so I want to address a few things that are taking place. Uh, and I really believe, I really believe that the Lord gave me what I'm about to share with you. I, I want to I make this clear. You're not going to like me. I want to make this clear. Whether you like me or not is not my concern. 
Are you with me? Yes or no? I'm not trying to change what you believe. I'm trying to give you something for you to think about so that you can you can decide between you and the Holy Spirit what you need to do and how you need to do it what spirit you need to do it with okay I have been bombarded with email messaging text messages on all of the prophecies and all of the different individuals that have prophesied Pat Robertson prophesied as recent as last week that Donald Trump would be a second term president everybody in this room is familiar with the Kim Clement prophecies Bill Johnson I could go on and on for you uh, here's here's the deal I'm not in the business of defaming anybody. Neither am I in the business of fanning the flame of anybody. Okay? You need to understand that. You need to take this all in stride. So I'm going to ask you two questions. How many questions? Two. Two. I'm not asking you this to be mean. I'm not asking you because I believe in a certain direction or a certain way. I said a few things this morning and people immediately got on the bandwagon. Pastor, you, you don't believe in the prophecies. This is not about whether I believe in the prophecies or not. Let me say that real quickly. Let me say this to you. What I believe doesn't mean nothing. And here's the deal. What you believe with regards to the prophecy means zero right now. Because you have no idea if a prophet's true unless what he prophesies comes to pass or not. Okay? At this stage of the game, there is nobody elected president. I don't care what you heard, I don't care what the media presents, I don't care what speeches have been given. I don't care what recognition has been thrown to any political party or individual. Okay? Until all of the decisions have been made in the court system. Because you know elections, especially this year, are going to be... <laughs> it's going to run through the highest courts, you can't imagine. Okay? So until all of that's finished... I don't, I don't care who's promoting, I don't care what media resource, I don't care what you're listening to online. Nobody as of right now has determined the President of the United States. Nobody. So first of all, you need to, you need to get past all of that. <laughs> Amen? But this gives us a moment to talk serious about a couple of things. I want to ask two questions. Okay. Question number one. What makes you angrier? What makes you angrier? A political party that may be practicing fraudulent activity to win an election? Or a group of prophets preaching false messages to win the affection and trust of conservative evangel evangelicals? who haven't sought God for themselves, but are willing to trust anyone that has the same belief system as they do. I, I can't fathom how many posts from Christian people expressing their Anger, distrust, and everything over a political party who apparently, I don't care how anybody sees it, 
is using, using fraudulent means to win an election. Right? How, how many in this room, you, you have felt the frustration? Those things have crossed your mind. You've seen some of the evidence. Right? You ain't seen a lot of it because the media won't. The media won't communicate it to you. That's part of your problem, right? Yes or no? You can talk to me tonight. That's part of your problem, correct? But here's what I've not seen one Christian post. I've not seen one Christian post any frustration at all about the possibility that these prophecies could be wrong. I apologize that your your comments won't be on the the thing for them to to hear. I'm not going to pass around a mic, but I, I, I yeah. But I heard what I, I hear what you're saying. But here's what I want you to. I'm not talking about where we are. I'm talking about your frustrations. Your frustrations. I've not seen any Christian yet post anything about the possibility of these guys' prophecies being wrong. None. None. And here's the deal. The fact that I bring it up causes you to think that I don't believe in prophecy. Or at least these guys' prophecy. I had, I don't know how many people after church tonight believe, that come to me and say, do you believe these guys are wrong? Do you believe these guys are wrong? Look, look at me carefully. It doesn't matter what I believe. Here's what, I've, here's what I'm sharing with you. In the Bible... Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, here's what the Scripture says. Here's what Jesus said as he's talking about the end time stuff. Jesus didn't tell us to be, be uh, uh. <laughs> he said nothing about false elections. But he said, beware of false prophets. Now, pardon me, he didn't say beware of the false prophets that you don't like. He didn't say beware of the false prophets that are freaks and they're just crazy. He said, <laughs> in the last days, there's going to be a flood of false prophets and people that come in his name. Now, here's, here's what I'm trying to share with you. I'm trying to get this into your head. You're mad over a fraudulent party, but you haven't raised any attention at all to the possibility that you, in this body, in the church of God, as a whole, you could have been holding on to a false prophet and pro false prophecies this whole entire time. And if, in fact, you think a fraudulent election is going to make you mad, what, what are you prepared for if all the belief that you put into these prophecies does not come to pass? Are you going to be equally as angry Because here's, I want to say this to you. The scripture didn't say in Mark 13 and Matthew 24, beware of false elections. It says, beware of false prophets. Here's where you and I are different than the people of the world. Here's where you and I are different from the understandings of people of the world. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, see this from a spiritual perspective, not just a political perspective. And please, please look at Pastor. Nobody in this room knows whether these prophecies are going to come to pass yet. Nobody. But there are people acting like that these prophecies and the prophets that are speaking them are as sure as the Word of God. 
They're as sure as if Jesus spoke it himself. And here's the deal. You won't know. (laughs) And you're building frustrations over people's uh, objective viewpoints on the basis that you want this to happen so bad. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. In the body of Christ, it's important who we vote for, but it doesn't matter who wins. <laughs> What's going to change for us? Nothing except for, in mind in your life, we know, ladies and gentlemen, that we're leaving here no matter who's the president at some point. We know this. Let me preach just a moment. No matter at some point who's the president, this nation is going to be given over to an antichrist spirit. So whether it's now or whether it's 10 years from now, what are you prepared for? What are you trying to hold on to so bad when you actually really know the truth already? I, I, I got so frustrated with all of it. I, I said to my wife, I, I said, I wish the Lord would just jerk the band-aid off and let's get this thing going. Somebody, can you at least say amen? If we know that trouble is coming, bring it. But here's what, I listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. And see, I'm, I'm not going to be a fan. Uh, I, I guarantee you the viewers won't be, this won't be shared as much as the last few Sunday nights. But I guarantee you, because nobody wants to talk about the possibility. And listen, I'm wounded in the fact that if this doesn't go down, as these people have have promoted all over the world for this to go down, it's not going to affect you half as bad as it is President Trump's family. If there was any potential for this man to come out of this office with a clearer picture of God and a clear relationship with Jesus Christ, and then this doesn't go down as those people that laid hands on him and spoke into his life and prophesied these events over him and his family, and if it doesn't go down that way, I want you to understand something. Somebody better start covering him now over the possibility of what could happen. Because you cannot, I'm looking at you, you cannot sit here so sure over prophecy from people you don't even know. You don't know these people. I I, I was in this discussion earlier this week. I said, you're promoting an individual that you've never had dinner with. That don't mean nothing. I'm like, how how can you be so spiritual to push and promotion of an individual who prophesies thus and thus when you violate one of the perfect scriptures that keeps you from doing that? What scripture do I violate? The Bible says, know them that labor among you. In this room right now, what's Pat Robertson's favorite color? There you go. What's Kim Clement's middle name? What month was he born? What's his favorite ice cream? Just say vanilla. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not rebuking you. But in in a way, I guess... I'm trying to get you to understand something. The church has got to get off of this stuff where you promote something, number one, that is not absolute. The only absolute is what you're holding in your hand if you're holding the Word of God in your hand right now. That's the only absolute you got. Yes or no? Yes or no? That is the only absolute you got. And here's the other thing. What? Why are you promoting a prophecy instead of doing what the Bible says for you to do? You're to judge a prophecy. 
In 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 15, 16, somewhere in there, it talks about the gift of prophecy. And it says for you people that are, have a prophecy to prophesy and let the church judge. What's the point in judging a prophecy if you're just going to be gullible for it and in it and with it and just throw all your eggs into the basket with it? You can't be objective and promote at the same time. All the while, you're angry about a political party's possible fraudulent activities to gain an office. But you're not upset about the possibility of false prophecies swaying your emotions. And here, here listen to me carefully. I, I want to scream this to you. I want you to hear me say this. If this doesn't go down like the prophets prophesied, then comes the excuses. Then comes all of the stuff that we're going to have to go through next about why this didn't go down. I've already heard part of it. I've already heard two, two of these guys sit in front of the television in front of a camera yesterday. One, two, Robin, you got me now? Can you hear me now? Two, two guys sat in front of the camera yesterday, and, and here, is, this is two people that prophesied emphatically that President Trump would have two terms, and then just yesterday, they're already preparing in case he didn't. And, and, and one of the things that they were saying was, well, you, you know, God never, this is, this is a quote from one of the gentlemen. God doesn't always get his will. Now this is, listen to me carefully. This is two guys that are coming from the same arena where all these other guys come from that are prophesying about this stuff. I know how bad you want things to go in a certain direction. I know. Listen to me carefully. I want that too. Can we all get on that page? I want that too. So let's all say we want that too. And we know what that is. I didn't vote for any candidate this year that was uh, pro-choice. I, I took into the ballot, into the voting booth this year, my list of anybody and everybody in every office that was, that was pro-life. I wasn't voting for anybody that killed infants and killed babies. Can you, say, can you shout amen? amen? So I'm trying to convey to you without telling you. <laughs> I guess I just told you. Here we go. So, so don't come at me. But here's what I want you to know. I want you be, to be spiritually prepared not emotionally despondent. I'll say that again. I want you to be spiritually prepared, not emotionally despondent, no matter what. No matter what happens. And if you're angry at fraudulent activity, you should always, and you should right now, be a little bit disturbed about the potential of false prophecy. That's just the first question. Touch somebody and say, I, I used to like him. I, I haven't even got to the vials of the wrath yet. <laughs> I, I'm trying to help you. Because here's what's happening in the earth. The culture is trying to move you emotionally one way or the other. And you're the people that shouldn't be moved emotionally. You're the people that should be set. Here's what the Bible said. And I read this to you a while back, a few weeks ago, in the book of Daniel chapter 9. When the Antichrist is coming to power, when his office is coming to fruition, 
the Bible says at the same time that happens, the, the people of God who know their God become strong and do exploits. We don't become wavery. We don't vacillate an emotional bank. We become strong. Our relationship is secure. I feel like the Holy Ghost is just wanting me to just preach instead of teach. <laughs> Are you in the room? We, we become strong and do exploits. We're not waving. We're, listen, our faith is not put on prophetic utterance. Our faith is put on the fundamental truths of the Word of God. It goes back to Pastor Heath's sermon over and over and over. It's foundation, it's foundation, it's foundation. And when I say that, I think of another sermon that he preached here a few years back that said you can't fix stupid. <laughs> Some of you will probably go back and try to find that one. Here's the deal. I, I'm trying to help you in both perspectives. But I can't help you. If you're going to put your trust in something that's not trustable, and I don't care who spoke it, there's, the Son of God is not here. We are fallible men, and sometimes fallible men utter things based on what they're feeling in society, based on what they're thinking people want, and what is desirable. In the Old Testament, God was sending them prophecies that said, I'm going to give you over to a nation and they're going to take you in as bondage. And they wouldn't hear that prophet. And at the same time that prophet was coming and telling the truth, there were the other prophets that were telling them, that's a lie. God's going to bless you. you you're going to be fine. This land is going to be fertile. Your barns are going to be full. Pastor Rick just busted my bubble. Somebody said, well, we, we can hope. I said, hope's all you got right now. Hope is all you have right now. I hope to God it comes true. I hope to God it comes true. Now I hope it comes true not on the basis of, of what's best for this nation. I hope to God it comes true now. On the basis of that man's family. What would you feel right now if your family had been prophesied to and it be found out a lie? How would you feel toward the community that prophesied it and stood around you with it? Because that's the potential of where we are. Whether we like it or not, that's where we are. At this point in time, to point, to, to, to allude to what he just said, we're, we're in the middle of this now. You're not on the finality of this. You're in the middle of this. So right now, this is a 50-50 chance. But we're not talking like it's a 50-50 chance. We're not addressing the fact that there is the potential of false prophetic utterance that's gone out. We haven't addressed that. Nobody wants to think in those terms. And yet you're mattering a wet hen at a political party that's possibly used fraudulent activity to win the election. So you got to pause. you got to take a breath. And I want to answer that question for you. It should make you more angry of the potential of a false prophetic utterance than a political system's fraudulent activity. And here's why. Because, yes, you are American citizens, but more importantly than that, you're part of the kingdom of God. We operate under a different set of rules than the Republic of America. Are you in the room? Can I, I want to scream this to you. At some point, the Republic of America is going to violate kingdom principle. At some point, because the Bible said all the nations of the world are going to come against Israel. And you in this room know this to be a fact. That God said, I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. 
and he's speaking of God's bride, Israel. God's elect, Israel. God's chosen people, Israel. The bride of Christ is the church. But God's covenant is with whom? Israel. You understand that? So at some point, you have to sit here as citizens of a republic and decide, are you going to operate in the republic or are you going to be governed by the kingdom? That's some tough stuff that the body of Christ don't want to think about right now. They don't want to fool with this right now. You, you just want your gas prices to stay low. You just want your 401ks to keep flourishing. You just want to be putting food on your table. And God forbid we run out of toilet paper another time. I'm getting hot. And why in the world we run out of toilet paper with a virus that has nothing to do with your... Freaks me out, doesn't he, you? You ready for question number two? Number two. This is a positive question. See, my first question, what makes you angrier? My second question is, what makes you happier? You could at least smile when I say happier. What makes you happier? Here it is. A Department of Justice who supposedly put watermarks on electoral ballots to catch potential deception in an electoral process if one more person sends me that, I'm going to vomit. Does that make you happy? I get tickled when people tell me that. They smile. When my wife and I talk about it, I'm like, yeah, that's the best plan I ever heard. Wouldn't that be awesome? Y'all, you sitting there feeling like you're trapped now because you are. Wouldn't that be awesome if that really happened? Wouldn't it be great if somebody was smart enough eight months ago to print a watermark because they knew there's going to be fraudulent activity and then once this, this thing hits the court system and all these ballots come in, if they can actually get to the ballots, and then here's all these ballots that are watermarked <laughs> and dead people's voting. <laughs> Wouldn't that, doesn't that make you happy? that make you happy? That thrills me. I'm just going to go on record. I pray to God somebody was that smart. <laughs> what if? Does that make you happy or, 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 or does this make you happy? Or God? Not the Department of Justice, but God, the King of Justice, Allowing false prophets to be heard by the elect of God around the world to see who could easily be deceived by voices with desirable outcomes instead of truth regardless of the outcome. Oh, that doesn't make you happy. That doesn't make you happy. It makes you happy if somebody else gets caught. <laughs> I got to take this off. It's bothering my ears. I only got so much real estate up here on these ears with these hearing aids. And since it ain't working, why do I keep this on? Right? I'm going to walk out of the camera for a minute and back in. Did, did you pick up what I just put down? Would you like me to say it again? I, I'm going to read the whole question. And if you would like, I'm going to put these in print for you next week too. Because <laughs> you're going to be a few months before you know the outcome. Here it is. Which makes you happier? A Department of Justice who supposedly put watermarks on electoral ballots to catch potential deception in an electoral process, or God, the King of Justice, allowing false prophets to be heard by the elect of God around the world to see who could be easily deceived 
by voices with desirable outcomes. Desirable outcomes mean speaking those things that people want to hear or wish to happen instead of truth regardless of the outcome. You see, you're interested in the Department of Justice using a method and mean for capturing a wrongdoing. And you're happy about that. But by the same token, you're not happy about the possibility that God permitted all of these voices of prophetic utterance to penetrate the elect of God to see who could be deceived and who couldn't. You don't want to hear me put it this simple, but God just put a watermark on your ballot. And now that it's on your foot, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? That doesn't make us happy. You say, God wouldn't do that, will he? Why did God warn you over a dozen times about being deceived in the last days and false prophets in the last days. Can I ask you a question? What would the false prophets prophesy? If it's not something as of this nature that you put all of your trust in all of a sudden. And can I ask you another question? Since when is prophetic utterances become so prominent I mean prominent on the stage open and in front of the entire American community as well as the world. Since when? Could it be that Jesus saw this moment, this point in time, And could it be that he gave you this whole entire year, this encounter with COVID, to separate you, to isolate you, so that you could connect with him and that you would hear his voice, not the voice of men, be they good or bad. Touch your neighbor, say, I I don't like this watermark on me. (laughs) I, 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 listen, I didn't come up with this on my own. When all this started going down, I turned the TV, the news and stuff off, and I said, God, you got to somehow give us some kind of root, some kind of solid turf that we could stand in. Because my emotions go crazy every time I turn the news on. I go to bed feeling confident, wake up, we've lost six states. Don't act like you ain't in the game with me. Come on, conservative America. Are you in the room with me? My, listen, I'm doing this. I, I'm not up here immune to what you're going through. But then I understand this. The Holy Spirit says, what about me? You're the body of Christ. You're not the body of that world. You don't belong to a a, a political affiliation you're the body of Christ you vote a particular way you have a mindset in a certain direction you hope for an outcome in a specific manner but when, the, when truth comes to, 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 to tell you're the body of Christ you're supposed to be founded literally on the word of God and the word of God alone your allegiance is to one And it's not the Antichrist, it is the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
So it's okay for you to go home tonight and in your personal searching say, God, did you watermark me? If my personal spiritual ballot was cast tonight, would it prove to you, God, that I'm deceivable? Or is my relationship with you firm? And is my trust not in what men say, but in what you say? Can I ask the question, where's the prophecies that deal with what's coming to our nation that's not positive? Where's the prophecies that talk about us getting paid back, being judged for the six million plus babies that we've murdered? Where are those prophets? Where are the prophets that talk about us being given over to another nation because of our behavior? Because in the body of Christ, we worship the monetary system more than the Messiah system. We have worshiped our pocketbook. Can I say that? And you can't say we didn't. Because look at me, please. There is absolutely no way we should be in this contest right now if the body of Christ voted against killing babies. If you're in this room and you voted, and I'm going to call you, if you voted for anybody that's pro-abortion, you should go immediately to your home and you should repent. Immediately. One of the things that God hates, He doesn't list a dozen. Six things God hates, yea, seven are abomination unto Him. He who takes innocent Innocent life who sheds innocent blood. How, how do you, in the, can I just go ahead? How do you, in the name of God, cast your permission for someone who takes that which God hates and exploits it to be elected? How do you do that? And here's the deal. Don't tell me. I, you, you hated Jeremiah Wright, President Obama's pastor, when he talked about the chickens coming home to roost. And when he talked about not God bless America, but God, you know, that other thing, America. You hated that. You hated it when he said it. But nobody talked about the potential and the possibility of it. Pastor Rick, look, don't go out here thinking Pastor Rick, he's sore with America right now. I'm not. I, here's what I don't understand. All these people that are looting, all these people that are making a mess of our nation, if you don't like it, I'll buy you a one-way ticket. The churches will take up offerings <laughs> and send you out of here. <laughs> How many will contribute? How many contribute tonight? <laughs> I know a few that I would like to recommend. <laughs> if you don't like this nation, it, wh why are you coming to a republic trying to turn it into a socialistic country? Why are you doing that? And if you don't think that's where we're headed, see, here's the potential. I see the potential of what's coming on the basis of Scripture. On the basis of Scripture alone, this is going to become a social nation, whether you like it or not, a socialistic country. Look at, who's, look at the majority of people who voted for a particular party who wants to give them everything free. And if you're going to get it to them free, where's it going to come from? Which reminds me at some point in one of these Sunday nights, we got to talk about that matter. I, I got a letter from a, an archbishop that I'm going to read to you that was sent to Donald Trump the day before the election that is so vital. It's potent. He's dead on. He is dead on. And he's talking about a reset He's talking about an entire economic reset where you forgive all debts. In order to have your debts forgiven, you sign your property over to the government. 
Do you know how many people that are in thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar credit card debts and everything else that's going to go? Oh yeah, I'm in on that. So, so look at me, please. We would not be in this dilemma if we were, in fact, a Christian nation. And we would not be in this, look at me, we would not be in this dilemma if Christians, Christians, so-called, were not deceived. Next Sunday, it could be the sermon of my life. Next Sunday, I'm preaching on strange voices. The Bible said, my sheep know my, and a stranger. And you would not, you, you, can't, you can't believe pastorally what it's like to be pastor in today's world with the stupid questions that come to me constantly from Christians. And when I say stupid, I don't mean that derogatorily, I mean actually it's stupid when you, when you look at the question with regards connected to the Word of God. Do you understand me in this room that God believes that marriage is a man and a woman? How many believe that? How many believe that in this room? You, you, you can't fathom the, the constant bombardment of that in the body of Christ. I told you a long time ago, I had a vision, uh, and I saw the United States as a map. And there were two storms. It was like hurricanes or twisters or whatever you call them things. And one came from the east and one came from the west, and they collided in the middle. And they never did merge. They would bounce off of each other. And every time that they would bounce off of each other, it, it would leave destruction through all of the states, through all of the country. And when I inquired as to what I was seeing, it was like, it was like when a, a, a weather, remember the old weather people who used to put up the things on the board? Warm, cool. <laughs> now it's all electronic, right? But, but here's, here's, here was the two storms. Islam and the spirit of sodomy was battling for the soul of our nation. And if that's not come to pass, specifically in this election, I don't know of a more appropriate time for it to come to pass. But I want you to know this. You have an opportunity right now to not be deceived, not be swayed in any direction except for one. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Could you give him praise? Do you like my two questions? I have a note. I want to read my note. And it just says note. The election results are still hanging in the balance. No one has officially been declared the winner yet. So all the prophecies concerning President Trump's second term could still come to pass. Until they do, this right now is the appropriate time to really take into account the two things I just asked you. And then the scripture that Pastor Heath read this morning was profound. It's in the exact middle of the Bible. You can divide the Old Testament this direction and this direction all the way to the end. And it's the exact middle verse of the Bible. It's Psalms 118. And verse 7 and 8. Let me take verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Look at me. I'm not saying because you believe these prophets that you've put your confidence in man. What I'm saying is be careful in the promotion of something that you have no idea whether it's come to pass or whether it will or whether it won't. 
if you join in. You know what the Bible says of a harlot? The Bible says it's impossible for you to join the bed of the harlot and not partake in harlotry. It's impossible for you to promote something that you don't know for sure and not suffer the results of that if it goes in a direction you don't want it to go. It's probably, I don't wish this on no one, but this was my thoughts this morning, putting all this in my thought patterns. It's probably a good thing that Kim Clement died. Because can you imagine that poor man right now being bombarded? He couldn't rest knowing what has taken place in our nation right now. I'd be horrible. Let me say this to you. What are you going to do too when all of these preachers that's told you you won't go through the tribulation? What are you going to do? I noticed three people this morning in preparation for their services today, they're announcing they're preaching on the rapture. Two out of the three, when I went to check a little later when I got back to the church this evening, two out of three are, are telling their congregation, get ready, folks, we're about out of here. Things are going to happen, but you're going to be gone. What, what, what bigger issue is there going to produce the falling away that the Bible prophesies? The Bible says before the coming of Christ, there will be a great falling away. Can you name me one biblical issue, one spiritual issue that can create such a falling away that it is, it is prophesied of a mass exodus that people leave the body of Christ in a falling away status, meaning they're irreparable. Think about that for a second. Can you name anything on a spiritual plane that will create a falling away of such a magnitude as this if it's not the fact that millions of people have been told you won't go through this trouble and then when this trouble goes down you're flat footed in the middle of it and then you're going to look to those preachers and you're going to say what else did you lie to me about? What else did you tell me that I can't be sure of? What else did you say that I'm not familiar with? That's the reason I'm saying this to you. You've heard me say this constantly. Don't believe it because Rick says it. Believe it because it's in the Word of God. Believe it because you found it for yourself. And the Bible spoke to you. That's why I keep reiterating, reiterating for you. It's Where did you find it? Don't say me. It's in the Bible, if he makes war with the saints, where did you read that at? In the Bible. If he's making war with saints, there's got to be saints here. And as I shared with you last week, if there's saints here, then you got to get them home. There has to be a resurrection. There has to be a calling away, which is the word rapture, and a resurrection. And that happens simultaneously. That's not two separate events. And that doesn't happen until the seventh trumpet. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> what did I bombard in your head last week? Which trumpet? <laughs> Where'd you read that at? Who told you that? It's in the Bible. Woo! <sighs> You know, I feel great when I get in this pulpit, but when I'm done, y'all wear me out. I got a partial lung, 
I'm, I feel like I've been in a gang fight. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> of course, I'm the crazy guy that fell out of my own trailer. That's a... That's interesting. So let, let, let me say this to you. Don't, don't promote stuff you don't know. Don't put your trust in stuff that's not sound, good or bad. Say amen. And then I want to ask you a question. I, I want to look you right in the face. I'm going to start here with Debbie. I'm going to look at Kristen. I'm going to look at Ma, Sash. And I'm going to walk all the way through here. And I'm going to look you right in the eyeball. Every single one of you that's here, I'll even look in the camera. If you guys stare into the camera real fast, I'll see you too. feel like romper room here. I'm going to look at every one of you right in the eyes. Okay. What's God telling you? What's God telling you? Not what you're picking up off the internet. Not what's being sent to you by your friends. Not what email's coming down the pike. I'm looking at you. You're the body of Christ. You're not going to rise from the dead because somebody reaches over and grabs you. And the Bible said that Jesus is the voice of resurrection. And the Bible says that my sheep know my... Can you tell you're going to hear that next Sunday a lot? And if you can't hear his voice, how is it you put so much trust in that somebody else is capable of, capable of hearing his voice, but not you? Yeah, but I'm not a preacher. I'm not a prophet. Can I ask you a question? None of the people that wrote your book was a prophet or a preacher when they did it or when they first heard from God. Let me say it that way. I hope they did it after they heard from God. You understand what I'm talking about. The most powerful people in the word of God that are your biblical heroes never had a prophet, never had a preacher, never had a church, never had a spiritual covering like you got, and they heard God profoundly. Why can't you? Matter of fact, you should be hearing him more because the Bible said the Holy Spirit is in you. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon them. But Jesus said, I'm going. And when I go, I'll send another comforter and he'll be in you. What's your heart telling you? When you turn off the internet, when you turn off the voices... What do you hear in the Spirit? And so help me God, if you sit in this room right now and you say nothing, look at me. Some of you have been saved for years, hundreds of years. And you still can't tell me what God is speaking to you. I challenge you to get back on your knees. Fall back on your face. And say to the living God, Speak to me, for thy servant heareth you. And if you can't hear him, tune out all the other noise. You know the beauty of these hearing aids? Not only then can they enhance sound, but they can turn it off. That's awesome. You know what you need to do? Before you go to trusting, do you know the lifestyle of these people that are prophesying? I got tickled. A gentleman preached at one of our conventions at the Church of God Mountain Assembly convention one time. And he's in a big way of preaching. He's preaching an ultra holiness message. And he makes this big quotation from a certain other minister in the bygone years and da-da-da, historical figure, but church father, da-da-da. And the whole place is going crazy over it. And I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait because I studied this individual that he's quoting in Bible college. 
And here's the irony. I went to him after that service was over, and I said, I'm amazed that you quoted, and I said that person's name. And he said, why? I said, you got the whole congregation worked up tonight over that man's statement, didn't you? And he said, well, they were with me, wasn't they? And I said, yeah, they were with you. I said, but would you invite someone to preach at your church that smoked cigars and drunk wine every evening? <laughs> he about vomited. <laughs> no, I'm like, isn't it fascinating? You're quoting people that you wouldn't even permit to stand in your pulpit on the basis of what you think they should or shouldn't do. And now here we are promoting people, whether they're good or bad. I, I don't, that's not my gig, that's Jesus' gig, right? But it's a lot easier, isn't it? You look at me. It's a lot easier, isn't it, to convey what somebody else said about God than it is for you to convey what God said to you. Somebody say, I ain't coming next Sunday. <laughs> this place will be empty next week. It'll be me in the video ministry. I love you people out there. <laughs> I feel like there's millions. <laughs> but nothing's, no one is more important than you sitting in this room to me. I don't want you deceived. And I don't want your emotional spasm going up or down based on what anybody does or doesn't do. You've got to plant your feet, folks. You've got to become rock solid. You've got to pause, turn the world off a minute, and listen. Listen. What is God speaking to your heart? I told you what God was speaking to my heart. I don't care who's elected. The body of Christ is not prepared for what's coming. If you think changing this election process or changing this election outcome by virtue through the courts is going to be a simple matter and an easy matter and it's over. You haven't seen the looting. You haven't seen the damage. You haven't seen the outpouring of the hellish spirit that is about to be unleashed on humanity. It's not what's taking place in the White House, in the House of Congress, in the Senate that matters right now. It's really what's matter, what really matters is what's happening in God's house. You set the tone and you set the culture. You set the dividing line between good and evil. You do. And when that line is, is foggy, when that line is not clear, then you get a nation that's supposed to be a Christian nation that becomes the mockery of every Islamic nation in the world right now. Because here's the deal. How can you be Christian and promote this activity? And how can you say that you don't promote this activity when half of your nation just voted for it? And half of those people that voted for it are professing Christians. This is some serious stuff that we need to talk about, be aware of. It, it's fascinating. I, I, listen to me, at the same time people are trying to promote, I got people that are trying to say to me, Pastor Rick, I, 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 I can't tell anybody the way I feel because I'm attacked. I got three individuals just this week said, I, I don't think this, that he's going to become the president. I believe that Biden's going to keep this thing, but who do I tell that to, Pastor Rick? Because the minute I say that to anybody that's in the church and anybody in the, in the position uh, uh, of Christianity, man, I am swamped. I am bombarded. I said, welcome to my world. But that's not the way we should be, is it? I said, that's not the way we should be, is it? I, I want to say this again. You're watermarked. You are spiritually watermarked by God right now. You're mine, mine, tekel, you farsen. 
You are weighed in the balance and found wanting. And the reason that Darius, the reason that that person was found wanting in the handwriting of God, the finger came on the wall, is because he took the things from the sanctuary and used the things in the sanctuary for his carnal benefit. And the minute that he pulled the items that had been stolen from the sanctuary and he began to worship, he began to party, he began to drink from the things that were dedicated to God. Then the finger of God came on the wall. Daniel had to be called in to interpret and that was the interpretation. You are found in the balance and you are found wanting. You are weighed in the balance and you are found wanting. You know the same thing is applicable today because the body of Christ is mixing carnality with spirituality and calling it righteousness. Woo! Pastor Heath said it today. When he was lost, he wanted to sin. How many see a difference in people nowadays? People nowadays want to be saved and want to sin and don't want you talking about it. They, they, there's as much fornication in the church as there is out there in the world. There's as, there's as much wife swapping in the body of Christ as there is out there in the world. There's as much carnal activity going on in the church as there is out there. The addiction is not any rate different than it is in here than out there. I'm serious. It just depends on what the addiction is. And yet that has the audacity to think you can't be deceived. If you can kill a child and think that's right, you're deceived. If you can sleep with the same sex and think that's right, you're deceived. If you can fill your body with substance that, that affects your mind and think that that's okay, you're deceived. If you can practice lying and, and speak in tongues at the same time, you're deceived. Would you like me to go on? No, say to your neighbor, I'd like for you to go home. <laughs> if that fails, hit your head, you go. Tell your neighbor, don't let anything else happen to Rick, Pastor. Pastor Rick, because every time something happens to Rick, he goes crazy on us. I don't, I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want when the watermark of your spirit comes before the throne of God. I want your spiritual voting to be pure. I don't want you to be found wanting. I want you to know that you know that you know. I know the voice of God. I know the voice of the shepherd. And right now, that's the single greatest voice that needs to be heard. I guess I didn't get to the nine vows of wrath yet, did I? I'm going to stop right there, though, because I gave you a lot of stuff to think about. Seven, sorry, thank you. I stand corrected. I added two more because y'all was being mean. <laughs> it's not thank you. Yes, somebody heard what I said tonight. <laughs> Listen, before you start putting your stuff away, look here for one minute. I, I want you to know this. I genuinely love you. I really am on your side. But we have to decide where our allegiance is and stay with it. I said it this morning, I'll say it again. And you're, you, I said it this morning, and it flew right past this congregation and hit me back in the face because you really don't want to hear this. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. That's the words of Jesus, that's not a prophet. That's the words of Jesus. The fact that these races, 
they are within 1,000 to 2,000 votes scream to you how far divided and how close we are to having actually two different nations presented to us. We are split right straight down the horn. And how in the name of God you can pretend that somehow that's going to end up okay. That's going to be all right. And at the same time say that you believe in biblical principle is beyond me. You and I are not prepared for America not to be the America that we grew up with. We are not prepared for that. And it already isn't the America that we had. I, I'm wounded for my grandbabies. My grandbabies will never see the nation that I saw. But I'm not going to wallow in that. I'm going to prepare my grandbabies for what they will see. I know what they'll see based upon this book and what the voice is saying to me. I've said it to you for six months. Ever since I came out of COVID, I told you we are not ready for what's coming. And we're still here in this spot. I'll ask you again what I've asked you for weeks. What have you done different since COVID? What spiritual change has come to your life since God separated you and gave you your responsibility for your spiritual life? Week by week, we, Pastor Heath and I and Brother Tony and Tom, we have no idea from week one to week two whether we got to cancel next week or not because of somebody's COVID situation. It, it, you, you know where I'm at. We are living in that world right now. Are we not? And that ain't going to change. That world that we taught this government system of ours, how fast we would submit, how quick we as Christians would fight with each other over a stupid face covering. How fast you could alter us and manipulate us and create emotional spasms among our own people, among our own selves. We taught them how quick they could get away with that. And don't you believe for one minute that the enemy didn't take notice. Amen? God is not the author of confusion. It's time for the body of Christ to stand firm on one thing. Can I give it to you? Here it is. Thus saith the Lord. If the Lord said it, you can bank on it. You with me? I'm going to pray for you. Bow your heads. <laughs> you wait, wait, wait. You still love me. <laughs> two of you do. Thank you. I got two men that love me and a couple of women. All right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. My own aunt had to decide. Uh, uh, that's Heath's mom, by the way. I, I'm looking for support over here. I, I love you. Thank you, Elaine. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I don't tell you this. You shouldn't have prayed for me to come back. Because here's the deal. I didn't come back to be easy on you. I'm more afraid of what I saw and who he is than you or what lies ahead. That's the facts. I'm not in no contest. I'm not out to be something. I want to prepare you in this little town of Monroe in our little area of responsibility for what's coming. Because here's what we got to do. There's a world of lost people that's about to be given to you for harvest. And if you're in the middle of these debates, and if you're unsecure, and if you're easily deceived, I want to say this. If your watermark proves to be false, God is not going to use you for the harvest.
How many want to make an impact in your family by living the truth, being the truth, portraying the truth, knowing the truth, loving the truth? That's us. Father, in the name of Jesus, both in this room and both those watching, I believe that you have, in fact, gave us a watermark test. I believe, in fact, God, that we are weighed in a balance. I don't want to be not only deceived, I don't want to be deceivable. I want to know the enemy's plot for me before he moves. I want to know, Father, that the truth of the word is sure when it says a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. I don't want to celebrate the fallacies of others while I live fraudulently in spiritual matter. I want to be sanctified, set apart, wholly given to the Holy Ghost, to the Word of God. And these in this room do or they wouldn't be here. Those watching would They want to or they wouldn't be watching. Minister to us so that we in turn can minister to others at a moment that is so critical in our world. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. I wish you the best. Listen, keep hoping, keep believing. But this is your surety right here. Okay? Keep wearing our hats. Amen? Yes or no? Keep going forward. I love you. If you're available on Thursday mornings at 9 o'clock, I'll see you in the back building. Thursday Bible study, three hours therapy session. You're welcome to be there. God bless you. Good night.